McQueen wove them all together so that there's a story to tell a narrative. And that's kind of what time does, is it reveals its story. Hi, I am Clarissa Esquera. I am Associate Curator of Costume and Textiles at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art and co-curator of Lee Alexander McQueen, Mind, Mythos, Muse. McQueen's Dance of the Twisted Bull collection from spring summer 2002 was one where he was drawing inspiration from Spain, particularly in the bullfight which is a strong tradition of, of Spain and other countries, as well as flamenco. He took these aspects and blended them together in this collection that um, really investigated things like beauty, brutality, life, death, um, performance, hard horns and spears and soft flesh. And he really looked at these dichotomies in a way also bringing in the masculine and the feminine, particularly the masculine ensemble of the matador with its very sharp tailored shoulders and the high-waisted breeches and the strength and virility that they have um, when fighting the bull, um, as well as the feminine qualities found in the dress of the flamenco dancer with its tiered ruffles, softness, but also the strength um, that a flamenco performer must display when she is commanding the stage in her dance. Um, so he brought all of these aspects together in a collection that really examined both the bullfight with this undertone of eroticism as well. The ensembles were inspired both by the matador and the flamenco dancer um, and came in colors that were an array of black and white and also red to kind of highlight bloodshed that would be inevitable in bullfighting. Um, Dance of the Twisted Bull was such a special collection to really examine within the context of this exhibition because uh, we know that McQueen was not only inspired by the bullfight as well as flamenco, but also he was inspired by Goya. And Goya has this famous series of the bullfight that he, he printed in the 19th century. And in this exhibition where we're examining cycles of inspiration, it was such a pleasure to display this Goya with McQueen, but also with uh, Picasso's series, also on the bullfight, that was directly inspired by, by Goya as well. So it's really marrying this idea and visually putting on display that one artist can inspire many art, other artists. It's really wonderful to have these prints by Picasso and Goya on display because you can really see that dress and the movement of the matador that McQueen was evoking. He was harnessing that kind of energy. You can see those high breeches, you can see the matador's hat, you can see his, his movement in his dance with the bull with, and not knowing who's gonna win this this battle in the, the bullfight, uh, the bull or the matador. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful illustration and that energy of the prince uh, was captured by both Goya and Picasso and what's so wonderful is I feel McQueen did the same in his interpretation through his fashion in that collection. When Michaela and I first started to conceptualize this show, we really wanted to continue that thread and that understanding about the cycles of inspiration, which we saw McQueen doing in his work while he's referencing history and previous art movements before him. And we thought, what better way to do that when, than to incorporate the work of a designer today to do perhaps sculptural pieces or head treatments for select mannequins as a way to visually bring together a whole section where we look at a McQueen collection in conversation with objects that relate to specific themes that McQueen was drawing upon. Um, and so in trying to identify this artist, we knew we wanted to work with someone from Los Angeles um, and who, someone who was also interested in using different materials, who has been innovative in their use of materiality, who's interested in sculptural shapes, and clearly is a fan of McQueen. 
And Michael Schmidt was somebody that just kept coming up in conversation and we were really delighted and honored that he was able to do this and contribute his works to the exhibition, which really serve as a beautiful focal point for certain sections and um, which really helps to continue that story about the cycles of inspiration until today. Dance of the Twisted Bull isn't the only collection where McQueen references Spanish influence. We also see it in the collection Saraband, which is inspired by the movie Barry Lyndon. Um, but also in that collection, McQueen was also drawn to Goya again. Goya is an artist that he, he references repeatedly um, in, in various collections. Um, and interestingly, in the Saraband collection, it is, that collection is named after the Saraband, which was the title track, Handel Saraband was the title track of Barry Lyndon. And the Saraband dance and music derives from Latin America and eventually made its way to Europe and then became fashionable there, where Handel would eventually pick up this style. So we see this wonderful cycle of inspiration. But that thread of the Saraband being a type of music that derives from Latin America and also from the legacy of colonization by Spain, um, we see those aspects in the Saraband collection, such as black work embroidery, such as black lace um, that you often see in the head coverings of women called mantilla. Uh, both of these aspects are utilized um, in two pieces that are on display in the Dance of the Twisted Bowl collection. Although those ensembles are from Saraband, they too draw from the inspiration of, of Spain. I'm Britt Salveson, curator and head of the Wallace Annenberg Photography Department and the Prints and Drawings Department at LACMA, and both of these departments were able to contribute objects from our collections to the Alexander McQueen Show. Pablo Picasso is, of course, one of the biggest name artists of the 20th century. Uh, born in the 1880s, lived until 1973, he really had a career that spanned many artistic movements and media. Born in Spain, he spent many years working outside of Spain, but never forgot his childhood fascination with the bullfight. As a young boy, Picasso became very fascinated with the bullfight, which he was able to attend sometimes with his father and uncles, and even made a deal with one of his uncles that if he would obediently receive communion at church, the young Picasso could go to a bullfight. And that was an exchange that even this rebellious young boy was willing to make. That's how much he loved the bullfight. He depicted it in many media throughout his career. The examples in the exhibition are from the 1950s. It's a lithographic portfolio. And I think what resonates really quite beautifully in the exhibition is the black and white nature of this lithographic project. And the garments really mirror that. And that's part of the iconography of, of the bullfight, that contrast between light and dark, life and death. These kind of uh, polar opposites are all within this ritual and this performance and this tradition. Picasso also had his own inspirations in looking at the bullfight, and one of those was Spanish artist Francisco de Goya. He also addressed the bullfight in prints, drawings, paintings. This was part of the national identity even then, and from a social perspective, the bullfight was a place where all classes would mix, and where the different origins of what we think of as Spanish society Iberian, Muslim, Christian, would have a kind of a common ground um, that was above and beyond religious iconography. I think what McQueen identified with in Picasso's portrayals especially of the bullfight was the way that figures within the bullfight drama could mirror the identity of the artist. And for Picasso, certainly he was sometimes casting himself in the role of the bullfighter, sometimes in the role of the bull. Sometimes one or the other of those figures would be feminized. So there was already this play of desire, 
and victory of combat and very much of a, of a, of a gender dynamic within that. I think that's perhaps part of what McQueen saw in the Picasso treatment of the bullfight, especially. And not only in terms of sexuality, but also in the myth of the artist and the artist as a creator. And where does the artist exert power and where is the artist vulnerable to desire? And I think it was those themes that, for me, connected these two very different artists. Part of what I love about studying printmaking is learning about the collaborations that have to happen to produce an ambitious cycle of prints, whether in etching or lithography or another combination of media. You need people who are expert in paper making. You need people who are expert in preparation of the matrix, in draftsmanship, in printing, in registering different colors, and even perhaps in making the box that the prints uh, uh, are, are housed in. I felt like that did um, resonate with my understanding of the atelier in the field of couture because you do have so many experts and craftspeople making possible this final product that maybe only has one designer's name on it. There's also a degree of perfectionism and control that comes into printmaking that I, I think has parallels and that extends to not just the brilliant flamboyant details that you see on the surface but what you might not see. For example in the Picasso lithographs, Picasso went so far as to design a bull's head shaped watermark for the paper which you cannot see when you're looking at the print. Um, it's really kind of invisible within the paper unless you hold it up to the light and in learning about Alexander McQueen and in seeing the way this exhibition treats his technique and construction and tailoring, I've come to think that there are a similar kind of um, beneath the surface uh, details and perfectionisms at work in his, in his clothing. Hi, my name is Regina Drucker and I donated all the Alexander McQueen ensembles that you see in this exhibition and um, worked diligently with Michaela and Clarissa for a long time on this and one important note was that this was a, a ray of light in the darkest time of mankind that I know of. I was born and raised here. I had never experienced anything like the pandemic and seen the whole world shut down and yet everyone pulled together in their own way and with all the fear and the horror that we witnessed as a people on this planet, uh, this, this helped a lot of people get through a, a dark time. And so we're sharing this ray of light with the world it's from the City of Angels and I don't know any other place on the planet called the City of Angels, other than Los Angeles. I know there's a City of Light and it's a City of Love, but we're the only City of Angels, so the message is emanating from here. And so a true collector, when they harness something that they become intrigued by, then they, a true collector will really start researching. And this is a vision from one man but this one man used so many artisans to create the pieces for him, from silversmiths, Sean Lean, to um, Philip Tracy for feathering and hats, stylists, everybody, people who made the shoes. These shoes, these shoes took so long to put together. And I used the entire pandemic time to start really collecting lifetime McQueen shoes, which were rare and are rare. I think out of all the shoes in the world offered now worldwide, 95% are after his lifetime. So these are considered works of art to me. You know, there was always something relating to humanity. You know, the injustices or, you know, religious persecution or women's rights being trampled upon or LGBTQ or, uh, you know, what we're doing to our climate with Plato's Atlantis. You know, he just couldn't say enough in the short time he was here, but he said so much more than any other designer that I know of. 
fashion interjects, you know, with um, life. I remember as a child, my father took me with my grandfather to a bullfight in Tijuana. I had never been to one, and um, I remember going into the Coliseum or the bullring and sitting there, and uh, there was a lot of pomp and pageantry, and um, it was a very sad thing to witness, this bull, but it was also beautiful in the trajes de luces, the, the outfits that the matador would wear, and the colors are so vibrant, very reminiscent. Picasso took from the bullfights. So many people have always taken from the bullfight. And so for me, I take the bull as like the minotaur man, you know, he's waiting in the maze. The maze is the bull ring. You know, all the little arches that take you into all the seats as you rise up the Coliseum. And then there's the middle. And um, the traje de luces is the woman. She's shimmering, she's sparkly, she's beautiful. And um, the spears that the matador, they're feathered, they're tasseled, they're fringed, and yet, the bull is either going to kill you wearing the traje de luces or you're going to kill the bull. There's just this dance of a beautiful death. Well, he captured everything there. He put the woman with the bull's horns, you know, so she's the one throwing the spears now. She's the one who's going to go after the traje de luces. And then, of course, you put next to her the traje de luces which is with the suspenders and the little matador pants, which is what they used to be called in the 50s, and then capri pants. History is just important because it's who we are and it's what we leave behind. Collecting the clothing for me, knowing that it was going to come here to Los Angeles for the people of LA for future generations long after I'm gone. And these will remain to intrigue and to beguile and to teach all of us what beauty is. Los Angeles has given much to me and to my family. And um, like I said, I wanted it to come here. And I'm so excited that the clothes are going to be beloved here because they're not just clothes, but they're works of art. They shouldn't just hang on a body or a mannequin or a hanger or be put away in a box. They should be cherished, they should be loved, and they should be studied because there's messages woven within each piece.